Welcome to Just Want a Quilt, a research podcast coming out of Tulane University Law School, where we explore all kinds of things, stories about quilting, tools, field trips, maybe some famous quilters stop by, and of course, a little bit of copyright thrown in just for fun. I'm Elizabeth Townsend Gard, your host. I'm a law professor at Tulane University Law School, um, where I teach intellectual property and entrepreneurship. I'm also a fellow at the A.B. Friedman School of Business with the LePage Faculty Fellow. And at the Newcomb Institute, I also have a fellowship, um, the Greenbaum Fellowship, looking at um, all kinds of things related to narrativity and fiber. Um, and, uh, and, of course, I just want to quilt. All right, so we're going to have a little bit of fun. We've been talking a lot about masks. We have um, Tammy Silvers of Tamarini, and she's talking to us about fun things to be doing while you're out there. Um, sh- uh, stay home and, sh- and, um, and hop, um, and uh, other things, trunk shows that are happening, all kinds of stuff. Um, and she's going to be coming back to us with other things that are fun um, that she's involved with. So keeping small businesses um, afloat, uh, supporting our quilters, She's all about that, and we're chatting with her today. Um, so a little bit of fun. Um, just a little bit of fun. Oh, and a quick note. You might hear a little bit of typing in the background. It's because I am trying to um, edit and get this ready um, while the interview is happening so that we can sort of get things, keep things rolling. So I apologize if there's any little tap, tap, tap noise, um, but it was just so we can post it right after it is done. Uh, let's do this. So um, we'll start with the first question, which is super easy. Tell me your name and where you're calling from. Okay. Yeah. I'm Tammy Silvers and I am in Ackworth, Georgia. Awesome. And how are things in oh, Georgia? So we're in really bad way. This is um, usually we don't put the date, but today is March 28th, 2020. Um, we are in, I'm in New Orleans and we're terrified of the next two weeks. How is Georgia right now? From a weather perspective, or are we talking about the virus? The virus. Uh, I think personally, it's very scary because our um, cases keep climbing. Our death toll keeps climbing. Um, The schools have extended the shutdown until April 24th, which is almost a month away. So that's extreme, right? It's extreme. It's super extreme. Yesterday was... um, brutal because it was uh, two degrees of separation I knew people who knew people who died and that was um yeah it wasn't it was it was rattling every every time is like a little tremor like when the schools close it's a bit of a tremor you know everything is a little bit of a tremor and that one was a big tremor last night but it all starts to add up so yeah, it's, not, it's just not, it's just not cool. You know, it's just really, it's not cool. So anyway, so um, it feels like um, talking, so sometimes it feels like talking about normal things is rude. And sometimes it feels like talking about normal things is uh, a great escape. Um, it's hard to know um, what to do in this in things, but we're going to chat a little bit about you Okay. And a little bit about um, your one of part of our um, designers for our inventory project, which is going to get extended because the patterns are at Tulane and now it's um, closed down. So we're having a little bit of a snafu on that, but we'll deal with it. Um, and there's no time frame for any of it. It's just fun. So, you know, it can extend as long as we need it to. Um, but um, tell me your first memory of someone sewing or quilting in your life. Oh my gosh. So I, I grew up with makers and um, grew up in rural Alabama. And my grandmother, I know that she would cut down my mother's old dresses to make me dresses when I was a toddler. Really? And That's nice. Yeah. yeah. So I grew up around her sewing. And the earliest memory I have of anything sewing related. I can remember playing with her pins and she would let me like organize them by color and I would make like little pin armies. So all the red would be on one side and the yellow would be on another. And then the first time I remember doing anything myself, I felt that I was very um, fashion forward and made incredibly, probably hideous. I don't know. I know they were hideous uh, garments for my Barbies with. Ah, yes. Yes. yes, I did that, right? Like, totally, right? 
right? Keep working. Uh-huh. So, yeah, but, but it was also very empowering because she let me do that, right. you know, and she let me have full reign and didn't say, oh, my gosh, girl, what were you thinking? Um, she just in- encouraged me. And that was that was very empowering. And I think that's why I consistently return to textiles, you know, when I look at creating. Totally. Um, okay, so we are now in, so I think what's really fascinating is we've been having all these conversations with um, people who make um, patterns. Tell us a little bit about sort of where you place yourself within the industry, and then I'm curious what's happening to the industry in the midst of the coronavirus. So tell us a little bit about your life before the chaos began, um, and then we'll get to what's happening now. Um, my life before the chaos began, well, I... Um like like a lot of pattern designers am struggling to make my mark right yeah. uh, establish my tribe and find my following and really and to be honest find my voice um within the the creating process so if i want to create a pattern what kind of um what kind of style do i really want to establish as uniquely tamarinis and that's really where i was at um before the bottom dropped out of everything right yeah um and let's go to your site what's your site tell us how to get to your site Okay, so my website and everything that I do is Tamarinis. So www.tamarinis.com. And Tamarinis is spelled T A M A R I N I S. Is that right? S and S is in Sam. Yes. Right. Tam- Tamarinis. Yep. I'm here. Okay, so um, tell me what you sort of what your style is. Tell me sort of what you do. Sort of what your thoughts are about sort of where you want to be in this crazy quilting world. <laughs> so I, my style falls in between other established style areas. I'm not completely modern. Um, I embrace batiks, probably because I design batiks. Um, so I embrace batiks. Um, and, and many of my projects have a nod towards the traditional, which I know a lot of modern quilts do too. So I fall somewhere between traditional and modern, more in the contemporary. Um, but I have a, a few different niches that my designs tend to fall into. I have my paper piecing style, which can be a little more elaborate um, and advanced, intricate, I guess is a better phrase for it. And then I have my guided improv, which I am totally having so much fun with. I love the idea of improvisational piecing, but from a designer perspective, rather than an artist perspective, improvisational piecing can be difficult to write a pattern for because the end user, the person that gets the pattern, wants to create what they see on the cover. Yeah. So that's where I came up with guided improv. I like it, that idea. I, it, it's been a lot of fun. And when I teach it, people really, most people really seem to enjoy it. It's, it gives the look of improvisational piecing. So it's not perfect <laughs> but because it's guided because you have measurements where to make markings for fabric placement. You can come pretty close to exactly what you see on the cover. And I started out with diamond shapes and have done a lot of different projects with that, either flat diamonds or woven or overlapping diamonds. But then my most recent one was a Mariner's Compass doing guided improv, which oh, was Oh, that's awesome. nice. That's on my list. I haven't done one of those. That's interesting. I um, love Mariner's and- Compass, but most people do it paper piece, and then you have right. to take the paper out, right? That's right. That's right. Yeah. And so you're doing it as an improv kind of thing? Yes. Yes. Oh, so when, yeah. So when you look at it, um, just glance at it. It's like, okay, that's a, that's a, a Mariner's compass block and you think it's paper pieced. But if you inspect it closely, you see the points don't quite match up, you know, everything exactly the same size. So for some people, that's great. Yeah. And it was a lot of fun. Yeah. That's yeah. really great. Um, 
And so tell me, you also, I see that you are participating in the stay at home and hop with us. Um, Tell us a little bit about what that is. So that was an effort to just bring some additional exposure to these small businesses because we're all seeing on the news about, you know, small businesses are suffering um, uh, because people are staying at home. You know, they are social distancing, which means they're not going into their small businesses. And um, and then a lot of our shows shut down for yeah. safety reasons, right. you know, to keep keep people at home. And what, what quilters at home may not realize is that um, some of these shops and these vendors invested a great deal of money in getting to those shows. And I, I even read of instances where the vendors were at the show. They had already arrived at the hotel, already checked in. They're at the show floor. They have set up and the show closed. So now they're sitting on all of this inventory. They have that expense and it's like, okay, so what can we do in place of these shows? So that's where the the stay at home and shop hop came about is, okay, we're going to gather together and we're going to have one event. It's run about a week. Monday is the last day of posting where we're going to share our links and um, just, it, it has worked really well because I think a lot of people have found new shops, new designers that they may not have been aware of. And that's awesome because even if they're not shopping right now, at least they're aware. So it's brought that awareness for these small businesses. And a lot of the folks that are participating are running specials during the hop. So that's great too. If you are in a position to shop, it's a great opportunity to get some some deals. So, okay, so let's say I'm listening, and I'll post this today so people can um, can uh, hop. Um, but tell me how we participate in it. How do we get to it? How do we know about it? So all of us have been posting on our social media platforms, and we have been posting the schedules. So, for example, on my blog. Yes, that's which- where I'm at, is your blog. I yes, guess if so I, I connect your blog, I, I'll put your this post on the um, recording. That way they can sort of see where to go, right? Mm-hmm. Right. So on the blog post, on people's social media posts, we are listing the links for these various participating shops. That's really and- great, right. And your blog is so great because um, it has all of it there. Like you can just go there. So um, – Okay, cool. So again, um, I'll post this as part of the um, the uh, interview. Um, but if you go to tamarinis uh, dot com and just go to the blog, it's right there. So um, you can also probably put in um, hashtag stay at home and hop, uh, yeah. and um, and you probably can get to it as well. It doesn't yeah. have its own website, right? No, it does not have its own website. It does not. Now, now do, um, I, it's so interesting because I think there's like three stresses right now. Economic, huge, right? And that's what you're sort of trying to address. Um, yes. med- medical, both personal and like our fear of getting sick and then the medical industry. I guess maybe just two, right? And then just three kind of living a new life. Like it's so very different. Um, do you feel, tell me a little bit about, so you're really focused on the economic side of helping small businesses um, survive. That's really sort of where your energy is going to. Is that right? Well, for this particular endeavor, but that's what I was going to say. I'm doing something else that is not focused on commerce. It's focused on um, a, a, a diversion, a stress relief. So oh, interesting. Uh, what are you doing? So Cherry Geardy of Cherry Blossom Designs and I have organized a 10-day virtual trunk show. Oh, that's nice. Right. We have designers that are signing up, and so from April 1st to April 10th, from 12 p.m. Eastern Standard Time to 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, um, a different designer on the hour will be offering a 15-minute trunk show. Oh, so again, not, not focusing on commerce. We're not trying to sell you. We're right. trying to say, look at our pretty quilts. Right. And, and and the thing, the, what brought this to mind was, Guilds are, are not meeting either. And right. a lot of 
cultures belong to guilds and they go to guilds for the the social right, right. for the camaraderie and I don't I know for a lot of quilters I know for me my favorite part is show and tell show and tell is the best right it's the best it's, it's like it worth best. the wait is always I feel like because you have right. to get through so all the business I, and all that other stuff but that's yeah. super cool now so if I want to see the trunk show where do I go to that well, we are still, like I said, this is all very last minute because we're all just kind of scrambling like, ah, this is our new world. So I'm going to be posting um, probably on Monday on my blog. On your blog. So your yes. blog is a really, what I, I'm seeing here is um, tamarinis.com, T-A-M-A-R-I-N-I-S. You've kind of, you're getting involved in lots of things. So it's a good place to check in if you're trying to see what else is going on. Because I suspect that you'll do more than just these two events. Oh, yes. There's yeah. more. Yes, there's more. Yes, yeah. absolutely. Mm-hmm. Awesome. Well, I think that's super, super groovy. Um, now, let me ask you another question. How do you feel about um, – how are you doing? Uh, how is your family doing? How are you feeling about everything? Sort of on the personal side of it, how are you doing? On the personal side, um, it's – I try not to think about the negative part of it because I think for any of us, when we focus on what we can't do, um, we can become very despondent. My daughter and my grandson and my new four-week-old grandson are in Colorado. And thank goodness for FaceTime, right? Because I can't be with them right now. Um, I miss my friends. I miss being out socializing but that's why I'm trying to refocus my efforts now on how can I help other people that are feeling the same way so yeah now have you been making any masks (laughs) I have made um I we have a family friend that she became a nurse the end of February oh my goodness that's crazy Uh Des. Right. So right. She is, she's, she's been going to nursing school. Um, wow. She's one of my daughter's friends and she graduates, gets her dream job. And this happens. This happens. So I made her um, a series of masks so and have nice. said to her, I haven't participated in any um, additional mask making because this is the sad thing. Life is still going on. I still have deadlines for my quilting business yeah. that I meet. And there's only so much time in the day. So I have to meet those obligations because those deadlines have not been extended. Yeah. So, yeah. So once once those once those obligations are met, yeah. if the it's, need, okay. it's so funny yeah. because like. I can't believe I'm supposed to be on sabbatical, <laughs> which is like a whole nother joke. Um, but uh, the level of like what needs to get done in the day is just insane at this point. Mm-hmm. Do you yes. feel that way? I feel like yes. Uh, and I, a lot of times, I feel like I just have to stop. It's not like everything's done. I'm just stopping. <laughs> that would be the like I, what I'm learning is I used to be able to be like, okay, I have 10 hours, I can get all these things done. But now it's like, okay, I've worked for 18 hours and I'm going to bed. Um, so it's really interesting. It's a very different um, a different time at the moment, you know. It is a different time and it requires a different sense of balance. Yeah, yeah. Well, this is so insanely cool. Um, as I said, we're doing short interviews right now to, to sort of um, – encourage people to um, listen and play and um, I think quilting is such an important component Uh, if you're making masks that's super awesome if you are quilting just to escape I think that is okay too you know I think I'm doing both of those things Um, it's a really hard time and so whatever you you do is okay like it's okay to do whatever you want to do we're all just trying to survive try to be kind to each other Um, but it's just It's a brutal, brutal time. It is. Unprecedented. We don't really know. It's not like we have guidelines for how we should be handling things. This hasn't happened before. Yeah. I don't like living through history. This sucks. (laughs) It is not my choice. Yes. I mean, I want to survive it. So I'm not saying like, I don't want, you know, I don't, I'm not like, but I'm just saying like, it would be, I really like to have a boring, regular time in history. Exactly. Exactly. 
Well, yes. well, this is short and sweet, but that's what people are asking for. And I'm just super thrilled. Um, now, any copyright issues or any intellectual property issues? Have you registered Tamarini's with the, the USPTO? I have not. Well, you should. Uh, you're absolutely correct. I should. Yeah. You're absolutely correct. Yeah. Um, well, we have um, a book that we, so people listening, we, I really believe that everyone should fe- register their work federal, with the federal USPTO. We have a workbook you can use to, um, to do that. Um, and we have a digital version on PayHip. I'll put that up as well. But um, I really believe that because of hashtags, um, we, want, uh, we need um, trademark uh, more than ever, um, especially for small businesses. Um, and so um, we encourage people to register their trademark, um, and uh, and you can do it pretty affordably. It's it starts at two twenty five for the government fees. There's a lot of places out there that act like you need help besides like just learning how to do it, um, and we don't believe that. So we, we make the book pretty reasonable, and then um, we should actually put it on sure. sale since people are home and all that kind of stuff. But um, but yeah, so we made the book for crafters and quilters so that you can register your work yourself um and we've been very successful in having people get their their um their marks through so i think that's awesome i will definitely look at that and i will uh we should probably make that available and we'll try to put a a coupon code on there too for the digital copy we have physical copies but obviously we can't mail them out right now because um we're quarantined (laughs) um so yeah we're, we're going digital um and I'll be, I'll get that up as well. So, um, uh, yeah. So if you do decide to do that, um, let me know, um, purchase the book and then with the book, you can also contact us and we'll help you. So, um, it's not legal advice if you help us, but more like a teacher or a tutor helping if there's um, questions that you have. So, um, that's kind of our balance of sort of how to, because we really want you to read, um, we really spent a lot of, Ricardo is our, Ricardo Gonzalez is our editor in chief and we really made it so that if you walk through the book, you can register your own work. Um, so we're really pro book. Um, and so that's kind of what we do. So yeah, when you're, you know, sitting around and thinking like, I don't have anything to do, um, you should register your, your trademark. It's fun. It's easy. It's not hard. It's so not hard. And you've got all the, t- the pieces you need. You need uh, specimens. So stuff that has your name on it that says, um, you know, Tamarini's. And you make a PDF of all the specimens to show them. And you do a little bit of work to make sure it's available. And you fill out a form online and send your money in. It's not that hard. Um, and we walk you through it to make sure that um, you've got it all in, in good shape. But it's not scary. Awesome. Yeah. I will have to use that. Cool. Awesome. Um, and, of course, we are um, such a mess because you are, um, we're supposed to be doing all kinds of things with your – but that's just going to get extended extended because, you know, it's crazy. The world is crazy right now. So um, so once things settle down and things get a little bit better, we our inventory project will continue to go in amazing ways. So, um, yeah. so I look forward to chatting with you again. Um, will you let me know um, by email or whenever – if there are other events happening, and we'll do quick, um, we'll do a quick uh, uh, podcast for any of your new events that are happening. So I'm, my focus is not on that that, and so it's great to have you as a representative if you want to come by and you know for ten or fifteen minutes say what your next thing is. Um, it would be really awesome. Awesome, yes, because I do know of some things that are in the works, but uh, cool. because they're. Awesome. Just sign up and we'll do a quick thing like we did today and you'll be my representative of like what's out there, what's fun to do because we all do need fun. Sounds, yes, we do. And thank you so much. I've enjoyed this. This was awesome. Awesome. Well, we're going to post this very quickly. So I will send you the link and um, I encourage you to send it out to people um, and let people know because it will help um, get the word out about your blog and that it's a really good place for information. Awesome. Well, thanks so much. Stay safe. Cool. And you're cool with me posting? You don't need to review? I do not. I am absolutely fine with this. Awesome. Okay, hold on. So you've been listening to Just Want a Quilt, a research podcast coming out of Tulane University Law School. And I'm Elizabeth Townsend Gar. If you like this podcast, keep listening. Also, we have a Facebook group. Come join us. We talk about a lot of things. We also have an Instagram account. And of course, most importantly, I really hope you get a chance to quilt today.